Hello and welcome to the channel. And this is just an episode of What's in the Box? What's in the Box? What's in the Box? This is my Predator box that I bought from the comic book store. It was on special because people thought it was ugly. Marvel Predator. That was strange walking down the streets of my city with a box that just said Predator on it. So the things I do for my collection. So what's in the box? A bunch of comic books. This is my most recent box. So there's probably gonna be lots of filler in here because I wanted to keep uh, the comics vertical because they're best stored vertical. So let's see, what's in the box? What's in the box? So we have some dividers in the box. That's fun. I'm not really sure how the dividers are with them. Like, because they kind of curve on themselves. And then I'm never really sure, like, how do they treat those comics in there? So if you have an opinion about how to store comics in a comic book box, and if I'm doing it wrong, please comment and let me know. Um, also, I like to put in, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of room from side to side. And, you know, the backboards of varying sizes because you get them from different collectors. Sometimes they're current backboards, which are slimmer, or, or longer ones, or wider ones, rather, that are silver age. And then they jostle around in there. So what I do to fill them up is I use those free preview, free preview comics just to, I don't know, give them something on that side to push them over. So, as you know, they have the cutouts for the handles. And then there's like extra space, or sorry, an extra little flappity do, right? You don't want to cut that off because then your your handle is going to be weaker. I like having that firmness. But the first comic that you have in here is going to have a little indent from that cardboard. So what do you do? Well, I put a trade paperback, nice tough trade paperback. And the first thing that's in this here Predator box is my IDW Transformers Volume uh, 6 of More Than Meets the Eye with Megatron with an Autobot symbol. Now, aside from this being an awesome trade paperback and an out-of-print trade paperback, it's also a double, so I don't really miss it. It's not on my bookshelf. So that is the first thing. What's in the box? And then what's the next thing? Oh, okay. So this is my, um, eh, it's like... I always buy Batman Year 3s because I like Tim Drake. And it was uh, the retelling of the Robin story with Dick Grayson. But these are not high-grade issues, as you may be able to tell. The bag's pretty warbly. But, you know, you buy them as sets just to get that number one. And I don't have a super high grade. That's not a bad grade of this one, actually. I don't think there's any color breaks. So that's not, not too shabby. But I'll use that as a spacer at the beginning. Oh, the top of this, this box. Hard doing this, holding my phone. There we go. Ooh. There we go. And then sometimes you get lucky. Not lucky. You get good people from eBay or back issue uh, uh, purchases. But they cut out a nice smooth cardboard piece in the mailer. So I stick that in here. And then someone recommended using a top loader to put your top loaders on the end. So that that flap now has been deadened by the uh, trade paper back. And then you can put a piece of cardboard there. And this maybe essentially serves another side of the box. And what's, what's in the box? What's in the box? It's a top loader. What's my first top loader going to be? You guessed it. It is. You didn't guess it. Well, maybe you did. It's a modern comic. It's Transformers once again. But this time it's Transformers number one by Image and Skybound Comics. This is the Decepticon issue. Cover C as labeled there. And then I flip it a new over. And that is the cover A with Optimus Prime. Skybound. Now the thing with Top Loader is that they don't tell you. Nobody tells you this is that it looks so like nice and firm. Why do you have it upside down, Nelson? Because the top of the top loader, where you indeed load your comics from the top, 
is very soft and not durable at all. Like the sides are great, they're reinforced, you know, there's not gonna be any bending there or in the corners, but in the top there, very soft. So if you grab it like a crab, I'm not gonna do it, but if you grab it like this, you're gonna dent your comic. You're gonna warble your comic and you don't want that. So that's why I've stored it upside down to keep the top of the comic and the corners nice and protected. So you can grab them that way. But uh, yeah, and I don't know if comic collectors, they sort of sort on the top. They really notice the bottom. So you tell me in the comments when you're collecting your comics, do you notice the bottom of the page or do you only look at the top corners? So something you might do. Okay, so let's insert that back in. We got another mailer. And then what's on the other side? Oh, okay, this is my own little package, I believe. There are three comics in here. I'm not going to open them up for you, but these are the DC Todd McFarlane homage covers. This is from DC vs. Vampire Killers. That's the homage of uh, Batman number. I'm not going to pretend like I know the number, but it was Todd's, uh, Todd's uh, famous cover that he drew because it was easy and he didn't have enough time, I think he said, or he wanted to save time, but then someone did an homage to it. And they put the word killers on it. I'm a big fan of the band The Killers with Brandon Flowers, Spaceman, and Somebody Told Me, and of course Mr. Brightside. So that is a great cover. On the other side, an homage to Amazing Spider-Man 316, but this time with Batman on the ground and fail safe on top. And a nice uh, vintage-y looking uh, Batman cover art. There's the cover price, Authority of the Comics Code. There you have it. And inside, which I'm not going to open, is the other homage. I think it was Batman 119, which was an homage of Spider-Man, a number one by Todd McFarlane. So, put these in here. Oh, here we go. And then next over is that very same, that very homage cover. As you can see, they're all new collectors. Batman with the <laughs> Spider-Man curve to it. 118, 118, there it is. And then Batman doing the squat, and instead of torment, it says abyss. So that's fun. And uh, in terms of storing my comics, I like to put them uh, face to face and backs to backs. So that killers, and they'll be face to face. Because in my older collection, I've been collecting for, well, I had a collection for 30 years, and the indents from the back of the flaps was very disheartening. Let's go to the front here. What do we have? Oh, so this is one of my... Well, I mean, one of my favorite covers was Amazing Spider-Man 316. And just the idea of a guy on the ground and some rubble and a weird hand. And I found that this, Marvel Team-Up number 59, was one of the earliest renditions of such a cover. Not saying that Todd swiped it necessarily, but I just... I just like things that are that remind me of my favorite things. So, so I picked that up. I don't know. I think I got it for six bucks. Couldn't have been ten bucks. That's what's in the box. Oh, I guess this is a theme. So then I have an Amazing Spider-Man 316 swipe later on that year. Web of Spider-Man number 82. You got a guy with a hand. You got some rubble and the the hero down on the ground. And then, from the same year, Flash, number 22, on the ground, speed lines, a weird hand. Not a lot of rubble, but he's still down for the count. So that's something. All right, what's in the box? So let me see. Put those two together. Oh, I think that this is my themes. So then you got Lois Lane on the ground. And then Flash on the ground again. That's Superpowers number issue two, 94. It's a guy with a weird hand. Speed lines. Superman's the villain in this one. He's got weird hands. She's on the ground. Lois 
Lois, I didn't mean to, Superman. Number 25. All right, what's in the box? Then, oh, that fun what if uh, Spider Gwen, number one. It's just fun, just a lot of fun. And then along with her, oh yes, I love this. I got this because uh, as an actor, I like the whole Hollywood angle of Mary Jane. So that was a fun cover. I don't know if that's Art Germ. I know it's a variant. Doesn't really, oh, is that Art Germ? Mary Jane, and then on the other side, another Amazing Mary Jane issue one with the upside down autograph this time because she is an actor. So, put that back in here. What's in the box? What's in the box? All right, I can go in there. Oh, yes. And then I collected the Christopher Chaos. Now, I double bag because these are cardstock covers. They're a little firmer. So, I figure I could put part four there, part three there, or part one there, rather. And this is part two. The Oddly Pedestrian Knife of Christopher Chaos. Very fun comic book. Bark, as Todd McFarlane would say. I'm going to put this... Uh, this camera down. Because it's just so difficult to... So there we go. That's a lot easier. Showing off there of the Christopher Chaos. The other... Couple issues here. There's part three, part four. Very fun story from high school by James. T T I want to say Tinian, but it's probably Tanyon. Just a moment of silence for that mispronunciation. Thank you. Thank you for indulging. That. All right. Yeah, let's see what else we got here. Oh yes, here. So these are some of my indie comics. We got crossover by Dottie Cates. Really enjoyed that series. At least some of the singles that I got. Don't know if I'm gonna buy the uh, trade paperbacks, but there we have some crossover. This is a fun uh, series by Boom Comics. Damn them all. Fun upside down art enjoy that and a foil cover is always fun damn them all uh, I was on a trip to get indie comics that had cool backgrounds and uh, cool background art and real people I was looking sort of for more relationshipy stuff but certainly damn them all and, and crossover certainly fit the bill and then my favorite uh, indie comic as of late was the good Asian by porn set Pish, I'm gonna mis mispronounce the name. Uh, Pish, Pichet Shuri, uh, Good Asian by Image Comics. Uh, I got the trade paperbacks first, and then I, I just enjoyed these covers so much. I was like, I gotta get get some of these singles, you know. Uh, um, hopefully they end up doing them. But also in this box, what's in the box? Is my volume two and my volume one of the good Asian trade paperbacks. They help fill up the space in the box and make sure it's not just backboards holding up comic books, but you've got some nice firm cardboards on the next comics. Indie comics. Heart attack. Not sort of super powered mutants. Again, good contemporary backgrounds, a good uh, uh, normal human beings, nightclub, gorgeous, gorgeous artwork, image comics, Mark Millar, Millar World, there's Spawn, and the campfire on the cover, but these comics were so great, they were a buck 99, so what a great way to, to get me hooked, so I bought five issues, there's Bone Orchard, The Tenement by Jeff Lemire, uh, let's just talk about really good background art, really good art, I mean, it looked like they were like photo references, but still, like you get a real feel of these characters, and uh, it just makes me me care a little bit more, a little bit more. Nightclub for a dollar ninety nine, can't go wrong with that. And then 
I'm the most excited for this year, 2023, the debut of American Psycho, the comic book by Sumerian Publishing. Um, they have the license and they have some cool stories. I don't want to spoil too much, but that follows some other characters. And uh, Patrick Bateman is involved, but there's uh, an, sort of an expansion of the world. And also for 2024, Rumpus Room by AWA Comics. Love the mid-mod, sort of Hanna-Barbera meets Tiki Shag uh, aesthetic. 60s sort of fun, nice adult contemporary comic books. Also with great backgrounds, that sort of California feel. Also by Boom Comic or by Boom Comics this time, Specs was a very fun series. Takes place in high school, so very nostalgic. And this sort of looks like a They Live homage cover and then over the other side true cult i believe is the way to pronounce that but uh the uh, fast food workers which is nostalgic for me uh wear blue and yellow uh uniforms reminiscent of the bo my blockbuster days we used to work at blockbuster video so i couldn't say no to true cult cults that one yeah, well, it's in the box. I know that as I'm shuffling these books, it's very boring for you on the side. So maybe I'll start laying them out. At least you can stare at something for a while. So there's World Tree, which was a very fun comic with some real world characters and some gorgeous artwork. So I do recommend World Tree. It was very fun. And oh, then another trade paperback. I got Spawn. Kills Everyone, the complete collection, which is very fun. Some artwork by Todd and everybody else. Just kidding, not everybody else, but some people. Uh, they're mentioned there. And I enjoyed that series. It was inexpensive. It was entertaining. Put that right there. Oh, and then a friend of mine got me these. Apparently, they're from... Improv troupe, IDW's. Oh, I should back this up, maybe. Oh, it's too long. Voyage to the Stars. Whoops, I haven't read them yet. But uh, they seem pretty cool. I heard they were based on a podcast. So we'll see. See what, uh, maybe if you've read them in the comments, if you're a fan, I, I've yet to really peruse them, but... Um, I'm glad that I own them, and now I'm realizing how much of a hoarder I am that I own comics that I haven't actually read. You tell me in the comments if you bought comics that you just haven't quite gotten around to, and like, uh, what do you do with them? Do you keep them out of the box? Do you put them in the box and forget them? Uh, do you keep a pile for yourself that you've yet to read? Let me know. So this is Crumbs. This is a from uh, local creator Jesse N Jesse Nelson, Kyle Siemens of uh, Mary Madison Silvas. I haven't read it yet, but I, I plan to because it looks cool. All right, let me just let me prop these up against there like this. Also by local creator Fourth Dimension, Summer of Fun, number one. Very fun, I got the artist to sign it. Always love supporting new comic book artists. Because uh, you never know, they might get famous, but no, because, you know, they're working, they're working hard. What else we got in our indie comics? We got Void Rivals. That's the issue four. What else? Oh, and then we got some doubles. Okay, so, Void Rivals issue four, nothing on the back. What else? And then we got Void Rivals issue, issue five. It's a gorgeous cover. And then another... Cover of Void Rivals, issue five. That's how they get you. All these variant covers. That's how they get you. I will tell you. That's how they get you. And then, also, Void Rivals, issue five. This time, the Walking Dead cover. Because that's fun. And, well, look at this, Ninja Turtles. Because I love Dan Mora. And, uh... IDW had the Ninja Turtles and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers together. And that was a great cover, so I was quite happy. Uh, da -da -da -da. 
What else do we have back here? Ooh. It's a little bit more in the uh, uh, indie genre. We've got Transformers, issue one, the Starscream, the the uh, the, the Robo Violence, the violence of Robos. So that's fun. Let me pop that up like that. Maybe not. There we go. And got this for fifty cents. E Man and the Masters of the Universe. Uh, uh, cover by Lee in Yuk. So, nice. Uh, some image firsts, Homesick Pilots. Again, really cool background art. And Trish Out of Water, also very relatable. And then, Why the Last Man? Why? Why not, I say. So, that's our indies. Very good, I'll put these away. So, backs to fronts. Backs to fronts. That's so much for German. That's a card. Stock cover. And that's Transformers. Yeah, I like to go backs to fronts where you can. I can go back in here. And then now all my poor downstairs neighbors are like. Playing with his comic books again. So noisy. You know, you know how it is. World trees. We don't have to worry too much about them. But, uh, yeah, why not we just put this in there? Okay, great. So that's the indies. Now, what's in the box? This next section is my Tim Drake Robbins. I really uh, love Rosmo's artwork in that. I don't know, it's kind of animated and fun and albeit kind of goofy, you know, Robin's head sort of uh, uh, got that, uh, I've got a sloth for a haircut, um, but they're all kind of big eyed and fun. So you get that sort of youth thing, but not in that sort of, um, you know, problematic, sexy way uh, from the 90s, like with the Backstreet Boys, but in this sort of like uh, mm, real Oh, and there's a, there's a Robin on the ground upside down, which is uh, one of my favorite tropes on a comic book. And then, there we go. I mean, maybe teens were sexy when I was a teen. Maybe that's just normal. So maybe this is very, well, I don't know. I just, just think it's very modern. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, these are my floppies for Tim Drake uh, Robin. They're my reading copies, and I sort of store them in a, a looser uh, Silver Age bag. I've got the cardstock covers, which are my, I'm gonna keep them to look at them, um, collection. Then we got Heroes in Crisis. I saw some back issues at my, L uh, one of my LCSs that was uh, selling them off uh, for cheap. And I, I picked up most of them and then started reading them. And I was like, I love this series. Heroes in Crisis is sort of about a um, treatment center or a recovery group for uh, super-powered heroes and villains who are suffering post-traumatic stress disorder and or, or just stress in the field. And then there's a um, mystery murder that occurs and uh, we have to uncover the mystery. But uh, fantastic series. Really got enjoy the glimpse into the um, heroes' psyches. A um, little problematic for some people. Some people didn't like um, the mystery and how it unraveled, but I thought it was a really well-written, well-conceived um, uh, artwork. Uh, I, I, it kept my attention, and I enjoy reading it over, over and over again. So that's why I keep them in the, I'm going to read them over and over again, bundles. So let's put these back in the space of these two dividers. Let's find out what's in the box now. Okay, so these are just books I haven't read yet. So let's start with these ones. All right, so, oh, I've read these ones. That's the Transformers More Than Meets the Eye issues. I think that's the ones where uh, Chrome Dome, uh, spoiler alert, uh, they passed away. And uh, it's good to read. We have some cardstock covers here. Batman 114. Batman 113, and I believe in here is also Batman 112 with the Scarecrow. 
It's the three cardstock covers. Again, my comic book store was selling them off. So I was like, oh, we'll take them. And then I had to go backwards to 111, 110, 108, 107. I'm pretty sure 109 is in there too. Um, I love, the. Uh, what really got me was this cover right here. Love the artwork from this cover. Jorge Jimenez, or George Jimenez, or George Jimenez. Just love his work. And uh, love the action, love the lines, and love the coloring from to uh, Tori Mori. Mori is the last name. So thank you for your service. Put that in there. Oh. And then I just like this cover. That's a cool cover. Detective Comics 1050 with. I believe that's Jason Todd, perhaps. Could be Dick Grayson and Batman on this cover. I think in the other cover, it might be the Joker. But uh, there's Gotham, there's a lamp, there's the Batmobile. Legs for days. All right. Very nice. And then, what's in the box? Oh, oh very fun series. Spider-Gwen, Shadow Clones. Really enjoyed that. Uh, DNA, I forget, Nakamura. Uh, and then Shadow Clones, really fun series. I I know it's a little cutesy and fun, but I enjoyed it. And then Jackpot, the uh, second printing of Amazing Spider-Man 31 with uh, the homage to issue 300. I don't know why there's 300s on this one. I guess because it's a Jackpot. And that's Mary Jane as the new superhero version of Jackpot. Then I went old school. Got some old school Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics that I got from an old comic convention. They're not in great shape, but uh, they're very nostalgic for me. And they were the old black and white Eastman and layered TMNTs. So I can't go wrong with that. So let's put these away. Uh, guess the TMNT. Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness, what is in this box? What is in this box? Batman, Batman. These ones, what's in here? Oh, it's that same Ninja Turtles, but a different cover, I suppose. Well, I like it. I'm not gonna fault it. There's the Pink Ranger, there's the Blue Ranger. Boy, there's Transformers number two, the Starscream versus uh, the uh, American hero pilot. That's all I'll say about that. What's it say on the back? Nothing, I think that's the so one of the covers and then we have cover b oops cover b with optimus prime transforming irresistible you know and then cover c which is the one in 10 variant i'll keep that one out for for look c's so look c's get it <laughs> right that can go back in there and now you see we're at the the last cardboard, which has another top loader. So what's in this top loader? What's in the top loader? What's in the top loader? Oh, kickstand is a little droopy. That's what he said. So it's another top loader, but this time I've got, whoa, Transformers cover E, which is the one in 10 variant. Optimus Prime. And the thing is, with Transformers 2, they join. You see the orbs come together? Or maybe I should do it this way. There we go. See, they kind of come together to form. I guess they'll, eventually they'll form five covers. That's how they get you. So it'll look like the toy art, perhaps. And what's on the back of cover E is the Transformers issue one Skybound image, cover G. The cover G. I pulled this from my local LCS. They know me very well there. 
I got the 1 in 50, and I believe they gave it to me for cover price, which dudes and dudettes, that is, that is a win. So, this will go back in here, in between the cardboards. Maybe I'll put the uh, 1 in 50 on the inside. Alright, now what's on the other side? Oh, of course. An alternate cover of American Psycho number one. This one with Patrick Bateman calm on the one side and him murderous on the other side. The chainsaw scene. I love this cover. I didn't get the business card cover. I wanted it. I never saw it. But I'm so glad I got this cover. Fantastic. So that one's quite a happy, happy thing for me. And then what's in the... Okay, so then what's in the filler? We got filler stuff here. So to protect us once again against that handle. So what do we got? Oh, um, trade paperback. AWA's Lesser Evils, which includes... Well, I don't have the back of it, but includes some various stories. It's Tribeca Film Festival Limited Edition, but it's various fun urban stories that have nice background art once again. And then, sort of a throwback, like the night. Oh, dang it. That's what happens when you hold comics in one hand. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to bet you I dented that nubbin. But there's the mall. Issue number five. Which is a fun, sort of, saved by the bell with violence. Very 90s-esque. Very 90s-esque in its artwork. So that's a nice buffer. And I got oh, a little comic creator who does Death in Comics. So you gotta you gotta support. I think Randy Stone is his name, and then some Ed Brubacher uh, things. Some Image Firsts. These are only like one dollar maximum comics, you know. So you can use them as buffers. And then I bought Faithless by, like, uh, DC's Joker writer, I believe, Brian Azzarello, um, which is also a nice urban uh, story with, with relatable characters and great background art. So that's not the cover price. It's just a used bag. Uh, but I use these to read, but also as uh, buffers for that nasty... Uh, handle on the inside so there you have it that's what was in this box thanks so much for watching more what's in the box uh videos to come hope you enjoyed keep collecting comics right by local or where comic books are sold.